In this video, we're going to go over an example of how to calculate an independent samples t-test, the hypothesis test responsible for basically investigating whether two different sample means are significantly different from one another. So it's the way that we test whether two groups are different from one another. Now, there's a lot of stuff already out here. I have some data that we're going to use in our example. I have all the formulas we need for both the actual hypothesis test on the left here, as well as the effect size associated with this test, the Cohen's D effect size on the right. Don't get overwhelmed by all that. As I said in the last video, there's actually only six different things we need for all of this. And so as we've done in the past, I encourage you to forget about the formulas to start and instead just focus on finding the six values we need. So let's take a look. First of all, we have N1 and N2. These are just the sample sizes of each group. So let's make a note of what we need. N1, the sample size of group 1. And we actually already have this value. Since I have my index column here, which basically numbers off how many people we have in each group, we know that there are 11 different people in group 1. So N1 equals 11. N2 also equals 11, so let's go ahead and make a note of that. So we already have two out of the six things we need. I will note, by the way, that even though oftentimes you will see equally sized groups, it does not have to be that way. It's perfectly fine for you to have a few more people in group one than group two, for example, or vice versa. So don't get thrown off by that. Just make sure to sort of plug in the appropriate values in the appropriate places when the time comes. So the next thing we need is the sample mean for group 1 and the sample mean for group 2. This is simply taking the mean of these numbers and the mean of these numbers over here. Very simple, very easy to do, and I'll go ahead and give you the uh, values now. Notice, by the way, that I'm really keeping track using my subscripts of what values correspond to which group. So I'll use a 1 whenever this value corresponds to group 1 and a 2 whenever the value corresponds to group 2. And this is really important because you're going to have to plug in, you know, the values for group 1 and the values for group 2 in specific places in the formula. So really keep track of that. Use the subscripts to your advantage. They will help you get answers right more often. So the mean for group 1 is 8.82. And the mean for group 2 comes out to 7.91. Okay, so most of this is pretty easy. I would say that uh, there's only one or two difficult things about these kinds of problems, the independent samples t-test. I would say one difficult thing is calculating the sample variances. Chances are, by now, if you've gotten your practice in, you should be pretty proficient at calculating sample variances. We've done this in the context of lots of problems, like internal consistency and all that great stuff. Um, but nonetheless, it does take a little bit of work. So remember that if you want to find the sample variance for group one, you're going to have to you know, take this column of numbers, create that new column, find the mean of the values, which we've already done, subtract the mean minus each value, square it, add up all those squared deviations from the mean, that's your sum of squares, divide by n minus 1, all that good stuff. So this is, again, a plug for a previous video of mine that if you're not comfortable fully with that, go back, watch the video, practice, all that great stuff. But for now, I'll tell you that the sample variance for group 1, s squared 1, comes out to... 14.16. And finally, S squared 2, the sample variance for group 2, comes out to 20.29. Okay, now at this point, you have all six values you need for these different formulae, for both the effect size and for the actual hypothesis test, and it just becomes a matter of plugging in appropriately. So there's two common ways I kind of see students go wrong here. Number one, uh, one problem I see is miscalculating the sample variances. The second problem I see is just plugging in incorrectly or having a little bit too much trust in your calculator to put everything in at once and you kind of end up with an incorrect answer because, you know, if you miss one parentheses or something like that, everything is kind of messed up, okay? So reduce down in steps, be very careful about plugging in all that good stuff and let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll start with the hypothesis test. So here we have t, and I'm going to ignore the subscripts here. So x bar 1 minus x bar 2, this isn't actually anything mathematical. This is just to help us know. This is for an independent samples t-test where we're comparing the sample mean of one group against the sample mean of another group. So t here will equal our two sample means subtracted from one another, 8.82 minus 7.91. I will note that it doesn't matter too much which way you subtract, but if you subtract the opposite of what I'm doing, you will end up with, for example, a negative instead of a positive or vice versa. 
usually people don't mind too much either way because it's kind of arbitrary and your p-value, right, your measure of extremeness at the end of the day is going to be the same whether it's positive or negative. It just sort of matters the absolute value of your t-test statistics. So here we have 8.82 divide, uh, excuse me, subtracted by 7.91. 8.82 minus 7.91. Nine, one, and then we're going to need to find our standard error right in the bottom, and this is the ugly part. So I'll trust that you can plug in appropriately and so on. You know, we already have all the values, so it's just a matter of sort of putting these values into this big ugly formula here. And if you do that correctly, I encourage you to try it and see to make sure you can do this correctly and you don't have any problems there. But the standard error will come out to 1.77, again, if you do it correctly. And reducing this down will give you a t-test statistic of 0 0.51. I'll tell you that this is a very weak t-test statistic. This basically represents the idea that the difference between the means, the sample means of these two groups, is not very extreme. They're pretty similar. And we could have guessed that by looking at the means themselves. A sample mean of 8.82 is not that different than a sample mean of 7.91. And in fact, if we sort of plugged all of this into a software, our p-value would be greater than 0.05. It would not be less than our alpha level, our standard of evidence, our threshold of 0.05. We would not have enough evidence to say there's a significant difference between these two groups. So that's our t-test statistic. We're done with that over here. Now we just need our effect size. So here our Cohen's d effect size is going to be very easy to do once we've gone through all this. Uh, the numerator is going to be the same. You're always subtracting the two means, the key comparison of interest here. So it's again going to be 8.82 minus 7.91. But in the bottom, instead of standard error, is going to be some form of standard deviation. In reality here, it's sort of an average standard deviation between the two groups. A little different, but that's the idea behind it. So we're basically going to take our sample variance for group 1 that we already found, plus our sample variance of group 2 that we already found, divided by 2, so now we have an average variance, and then we're going to square root that value to sort of make it uh, a standard deviation. And if you do this, you're going to end up with a pooled standard deviation, S sub P for pooled, so this formula will yield 4.15. And this will reduce down to 0 0.22. So how would we interpret this? Well, remember that any effect size from 0 to 0.2 is considered a small effect, from 0.2 to 0.5 is considered medium, and 0.5 and above is considered large. So in this case, we're sort of between a small and a medium effect. Officially, we would call this a medium effect, but it's definitely borderline. And notice that, you know, the difference here, even though it's smallish, the effect size is still medium. And why is that? Why are we seeing that there's absolutely no statistical significance, and yet there's sort of a little bit of an effect size here. Well, that's because our sample size is so small. Remember that as your sample size increases, you have more statistical power, which makes it easier to say that a difference is significant, because we have a better chance, basically, of detecting any real effects that are present out there in the population via our sample data. So chances are, uh, here's the punchline. If we had, you know, two, three, four times as many participants in these two groups and the difference between these two means remained stable, we would not only find, you know, an effect size that was small to moderate, but maybe this actual test statistic would come out significant. Maybe P would be less than 0.05. But in any case, we've done our test statistic. We've done our effect size for that test statistic. And that's how you do an independent samples t-test.